Hi, uh, welcome to this particular uh, session. In this session, we will look at the uh, what kind of clinicians uh, that we collaborate with and why it is very important to collaborate with uh, clinicians uh, for the area that we are discussing, right? Also, for the topic that you are working uh, and the course that you are taking, right? Uh, many things, right? Uh, advanced neural science for engineers means that you need to understand uh, the area which is brain and for the brain you require neurosurgeons, neuropathologists, uh, you also require people to understand the brain interface, brain, brain computer interfacing, you require engineers who can understand the signal processing, uh, you uh, require engineers who can develop a band for you, who can develop a probe for you, require engineers who can fabricate sensors for you. Right, um, and of course, the ex, the the actual gap that is generally identified is when you operate the patient. So the neurosurgeons are the right set of people with which whom we collaborate. And just as much as neurosurgeons are important, so are the neuropathologists, right? So or pathologists uh, who who will help us understanding the uh, uh, the the who who works on the tissue, brain tissues in particular, and um, uh, because. As I said in my previous uh, lecture, right, that the histopathology is the gold standard. Studying of tissue is the gold standard, right? So pathology's role becomes extremely important. So <coughs> that is one part of this lecture. The second part is where we'll show the uh, different fabrication facilities and. I will be taking you through those facilities uh, in the experimental laboratories uh, with the help of my TAs and then uh, we will see the sensors that we will be talking about in the first uh, uh, lecture right? Uh, and corresponding systems for that. So, that is the uh, gist. So, if you see the slide, uh, we work with around 32 surgeons uh, right now and we will be uh, uh, talking more about uh, this set of people right which is the neurologist uh, neuro, neuro, neurosurgery neuro, whether it is neuropathologist uh, like Dr. Anita Mahadevan right uh, from Nimens or Dr. Vikas from Nimens, Dr. Manish from Nimens or Dr. Lingraju from Nimens or Dr. Shabri Girishan from Ramaya Hospital all people are uh, in very 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 important part for the research domain uh, in the area of neural science uh, and engineering. Uh, we will be talking a lot about um, uh, what are the gaps, how do we identify the gaps and what we are trying to solve uh, in, the, uh, in the lectures uh, for this course. However, let us see the other collaborators as well. Right. We also work in the area of ENT, endodontics, cardiology, oncology, neurophysiology, neonatology and uh, pediatrics. So, for endodontics uh, we have uh, Dr. Ajay Logani, uh, he is uh, uh, chairing the endodontic uh, surgery department at Ames Delhi. We have Siddharth who is um, also in the same department in Ames. Uh, from cardiology, we have Dr. Prasanna Simha Mohan Rao. He is a cardiothoracic surgeon, also chairing uh, the same department at Jadeva Hospital. Uh, Deepak uh, is an electrophysiologist. Uh, we have Dr. Moni Abraham Kuriokos. Uh, he is a head and neck uh, oncology, uh, and um, uh, with him, we have uh, Dr. Subramaniam Ayer. Uh, uh, so, Dr. Subramanian Iyer is a head and neck oncologist uh, from Amrita Hospital. We have so Narayan Subramanian, Narayan Subramanian is head and neck oncologist, uh, chair of the department from Sankara Hospital. We have Dr. Jayant Vaidya, uh, breast cancer oncology from University College London. With Jayant, we have uh, multiple papers, uh, we have filed uh, we, uh, and then also we have multiple papers with Dr. Gayatri Gogoi. Uh, we also filed a patent with Dr. Gayatri Gogoi. Um, she is an oncopathologist. With uh, Jayant, uh, we have uh, an interesting concept uh, on developing the probe that can be used during the intraoperative surgery for breast cancer. Uh, we also have Dr. Satish Prabhu as an oral oncologist uh, uh, from, from London. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Sonal Astana, liver transplant surgeon. With him, uh, we are developing uh, e nose uh, for people suffering from liver cirrhosis, okay, liver cancer. Uh, then we have Dr. Vishnu Kurpa. Dr. Vishnu Kurpa uh, is a breast cancer surgeon from Sankara Hospital. Uh, then we talk about neurophysiology, very important area 
we work with Mahesh, Mahesh is a neurophysiologist and of course, a scientist um, uh, uh, he is collaborating with our lab. Dr. Latika Mohan, she heads the AIMS uh, Rishikesh uh, Physiology Department, uh, we have uh, we have Pratik, Pratik uh, is uh, Pratik and Niranjan, they are both uh, uh, in the neurology area. Uh, and we work with them in Indira Gandhi Hospital for Child Health. Uh, and we have Sanjay Rao, Sanjay Rao, Dr. Sanjay Rao is a pediatric surgeon uh, with Majum Daso uh, Medical uh, Foundation. And uh, uh, these are some of the, the some of the doctors that we work on. Uh, of course, we have ENT surgeon uh, Dr. Manjuna Dandi uh, with whom we work on this neonatal hearing screening. Now, what is the reason of me talking about all these doctors to you as a part of this course? The reason is that when you talk about uh, uh, the clinical technology development or when you talk about uh, a medical device development or when talk about a bio, biomedical engineering research domain, you cannot and you should not just sit in the laboratory and think about a problem and start working on the problem. The right way of working in this research area or domain is by communicating with the set of clinicians uh, that have actually uh, you know identify the problems while they uh, are, are on their on their duty right. So, either in terms of surgery or in terms of diagnosis or in terms of screening right even in terms of uh, relieving the delivering the drugs. So, uh, this is very important thing that as a student you learn that when you want to work in the area which is related to the biomedical or medical right or clinical studies you have to and you should have a right set of clinicians. So, all these people right are, are great great enthusiastic people with lot of passion towards their um, uh, research right uh, and you, you understand that they are already overwhelmed with the uh, number of subjects that they have to uh, you know uh, treat or diagnose or screen uh, but still finding time for research is something that is really uh, commendable and <coughs> we as a lab are fortunate to have this set of clinicians there are many more uh, that I have not listed here but we have just started working with them. So, moving to all these fancy sensors that you are talking about from where exactly you will fabricate those devices right. So, you need to have a right set of ecosystem and infrastructure to, to address the important problems and to fabricate devices uh, uh, for the same. So, we have uh, uh, a lab which is called as a nanofab advanced microsystems and biomedical devices for clinical research. Uh, it is uh, in the ground floor of this department, this department is electronic systems engineering uh, under the division of CECS uh, at IASC. So, if you stop by um, uh, in a group right sometime I can show you uh, some of the facilities that we have. Uh, now, we, we hold several uh, equipment in this particular lab right from sputtering system to e-beam thermal evaporation system, we have wet benches, microscope, photolithography system, uh, uh, operating microscope, uh, not just metallurgical microscope and the stereo microscope, but also we have inverted microscope and operating microscope for performing the surgery. Uh, so, if you see the screen, uh, this is the yellow room that I uh, is there on the screen which is a photolithography unit and then there is a spin coating unit if you can see the screen. So, you have this yellow room, the reason of using yellow room is that uh, you cannot expose the photo register. So, we use photo, this is everything I will teach you ok, do not worry. There is something called photo register, photo register is short form is PR, let me write down the full form photo p h o t o resist r e s i s t ok. This photo resist uh, uh, we cannot expose the photo, photo resist in the UV light and that is why we have to use a yellow room. I uh, will tell you what kind of photo resist are there and how we can use it in the in this uh, patterning the different, div, uh, different materials uh, and we use uh, silicon, we use polyamide for fabricating several sensors. Uh, as I told you earlier, uh, this is a sputtering unit in the previous uh, slide we were able to see the uh, thermal evaporation and e beam evaporation. Uh, we will go through all this uh, equipment in detail in the experimental laboratory. These are wet benches, uh, acid bench for solvent uh, and here you can see thermal evaporation, e beam evaporation system. Uh, this is BSL 2 
the system, there is a uh, industrial refrigerator, uh, this is operating microscope. Now, we have moved it to the biology side of this. A uh, lot of students get trained um, as a part of uh, the course that I teach uh, in this particular department, um, but uh, overall also when you will learn even through this online platform, you will kind of understand lot of uh, interesting uh, techniques uh, and the technologies that can be used for fabrication. Okay. So, uh, let me go to the next slide. The next slide is on the another lab that we have which is on the characterization facility. We call this as a biomedical and electronic in the bracket we have 10 to the power minus 6 to minus 9 because it is micro to nano engineering system laboratory. We also call it as a B's lab B -E -S -L -A -B. So, if you google B's lab I I S C right you will know a lot of things that we are working on in the laboratory. So, we have uh, uh, several uh, you know equipment and also the tools uh, that can be used for characterizing the devices. We also use a central facility called SENSE uh, that is a mother facility uh, in the institute uh, for, uh, for the other processes like uh, etching uh, particularly dry etching uh, or characterization like SEM, XRD, uh, TEM right. We will talk about that um, uh, later. Uh, we have here NI deck you can see here right. Uh, we have micro manipulator. Uh, uh, I will be talking about micro manipulator. In, in, in fact, we will be taking a class on that. So, micro manipulator we have, we have NI DAC, we have uh, impedance analyzers, oscilloscopes, uh, uh, power supplies uh, and, and related items in the laboratory. You have desiccators to hold the uh, devices and equipment and you have autoclave uh, and we also have a BSL 2 on the second floor. This is a non-conventional class 10,000 clean room. There are classes of clean room. We have uh, uh, 10,000, we have 1,000, we have 100, and we have 10. And so there are classes of clean room. Okay, depending on the class of the clean room, the uh, purity is uh, understood. We will we'll tell it how these classes are identified uh, in in the next lecture. So now we talk about the sensors that we fabricate at the laboratory, right? So, each sensor quickly I will tell you how it is fabricated in, in, in uh, right now, but I uh, will tell you the application of these sensors, but I will teach you how to fabricate these sensors uh, as a part of this course. Okay. The first sensor that you see here, right, it is having an electrical and thermal sensors into it. So, this is actually a chip, okay. we can say chip is a chip that is integrated with, it is a chip that is integrated with interdigitated electrodes and uh, micro heater and thermistors okay, or temperature sensors. So, where exactly this all things are there? Where is interdigitated electrodes, where is micro heater and where, is, where are thermistors right. So, this all uh, sensors, so, so we call it as sensors are within this area here okay and when you when you zoom out zoom in right you see that uh, the SEM image of that so there is a interdigitated electrode right over here there is a micro heater in the center and one of the temperature uh, resistors right you can see here the thermistors uh, we can say and then there is a trench here trench trench is a pit that you create. So, that when you heat the uh, uh, micro heater, this heat should not cause the change in temperature of this particular uh, temperature sensor. Right? So, uh, this is how we will use it, I will tell you later. Uh, this is one of the uh, chip that we have fabricated in the lab. The second chip that you see uh, in this particular case, uh, it is a, a gas sensor, uh, but it is not a complete gas sensor, because the material that is used to uh, identify the gas uh, is not present, but it is a sensor which is integrated with uh, micro heater and interdigitated electrodes. You can see here the, the electrodes are in the center right? And the micro heater surrounds those electrodes. Hmm. So, everything is fabricated right in this region which is marked with a white uh, rectangular box. Right. So, this is the uh, and then all the uh, gold pads that you see are the contact pads okay, are the contact pads. And I will teach you. The, the good thing is you do not even see on the slide, but you learn how to fabricate this thing. Okay? I will teach you do not worry about it. This is the gold, but this is on glass 
and again there are lot of inter digital electrodes each electrode is about 10 micron in width and 10 micron in spacing what do you mean by that so suppose i just take one electrode and then there is so let us say we draw a line like this okay and then there is second electrode then there is third electrode right you see that the yeah you see that the electrodes are not touching the second side. So, the electrodes which is here is not touching this line is not touching this line right. So, what I mean by this line it is same gold ok I am just uh, drawing uh, different patterns so that you understand. So, if you see if I say this is A and this is B then the electrodes this is number 1 and number 3 are not touching B, but number 2 the electrode number 2 which is which is this one is touching B and not A correct. These are called inter digital electrodes or finger electrodes. The width of this electrode width is this and the space space is this the width and space space this is space hmm, is 10 microns that is what I mean. So, when you when you have this region when you zoom in then this is the image each line is of 10 microns and width is 10 microns. Okay. So, we can fabricate this kind of devices with the microfabrication facility that we uh, have in the laboratory. Right. Some of the techniques like RI, I will tell you what is RI and other things that we have to use the other labs. Okay. These are micro heaters or uh, temperature compensation sensor you can very easily see micro heater here, micro heater right it is like a coil. Then we have a, a, a four sensor this is a four sensor these are four piezo resistive sensors integrated onto silicon. So, for creating piezo resistive sensor you have to dope boron into polysilicon material and this boron is p type silicon is n type. So, you create a piezo resistive uh, uh, sensor and there are 4 sensors 1, 2, 3 and 4 1, 2, 3 and 4 right. So, 4 sensors are there integrated onto a chip where that makes a 4 sensor, but this is silicon. So, if you press silicon uh, it will not bend right. So, you need to create something called diaphragm. Hmm. This diaphragm is created using bulk micro machining bulk micro machining. Okay. So, when you create a diaphragm then when you apply a pressure in the front here the diaphragm will bend because of the bending right there is change in the resistance of the piezo resistor so, that is a concept. Okay. Now, uh, we have this another chip here this is also a force sensor it is a ring type force sensor and here you have the bridge there are 4 bridge you can see right 1, 2, 3 and 4 right. Each bridge each bridge has 2 piezo resistor sensor 2 piezo resistor. So, each bridge has 1 here and one at the end 2, 3 and 4 right and you can see the zoom in image uh, of this uh, uh, one single bridge right. This is used this small this is very small actually it is just like about uh, 2 millimeter close to 2 to 2.2 millimeter okay, the diameter just 2 to 2.2 millimeter. So, that small sensor is integrated the tip of the catheter that we talked about you remember atrial fibrillation. So, there is a catheter tube. So, the tip of the catheter this is this uh, sensor is integrated ok. Now, uh, so this is a force sensor when you apply a force in the ring in the center right all the sensors will change uniformly. If you apply a force and a certain end like this end then those corresponding four sensors would change accordingly. So, it is a very sensitive uh, uh, ring type four sensor with four bridges. 
Now, let us go into this particular uh, side of the slide. We have we have and we will learn about this a flexible sensor with 32 electrodes at the tip this small region here right he is having all this design right there are recording electrodes there are contact electrodes and you can you can use this by implanting this uh, this chip into the rat's brain okay when you implant the chip into the rat's brain you can measure what we call as a brain signal but what is brain signal one thing we already learn in either our uh, engineering or science class or in general is ECG, EEG, right? EMG, ECG is electrocardiography right? or cardiogram, EEG electroencephalogram, EMG electromyogram, right? muscles, muscles, right? These are brain signals, this is heart signals, heart. This is brain, these are muscles, right. So, ECG, EEG, and EMG. Now, there is one more term called ECOG. Mm. E E G E C O G E G is electroencephalogram, but E C O G stands for electrocortography. Electrocortography. E L E C T R O C O R T I O G R A P H Y. Electrocortography. Mm sir ec signals when you take the signals directly from the brain right not from the forehead when you take signals from the forehead from the head it is like 10 20 system is used uh, for measuring eeg but when you take the signals acquire the signals from the brain then it becomes electrocardiography okay so for electrocardiography we have the device that is that you can see in the screen there are 32 recording electrodes you see this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 same way you can go to 32 in the small area you have 32 electrodes this is meant for a rodent experiments rodent r o d e n t what a rodent means we use red as a animal model Okay. So, we operate the rat right perform the surgery place the device onto the rat's brain okay, and then acquire the signals and then study different diseases right. One disease that we focus on is epilepsy okay, epilepsy. Hmm. So, we will see how this device is fabricated and how we can study epilepsy. This, so, this is the uh, another device that you can see here. This is also for recording the electrical signals uh, from the brain or you can say ECOG and here there are 10 electrodes. How many electrodes? 10. Here there are 32 electrodes. Then you see this device right, this device is this one. These are how many? 5 electrodes right, 5, 32, 5, 10. Why we have different kind of electrodes on the device? Because depending on the region. So, now this study that we are performing right now, which is this electrodes, 5 electrodes, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. These 5 electrodes we use it for a disease called, for understand disease called Parkinson. Parkinson, okay. For disease called Parkinson, we are understanding how the surface electrical simulation will be different than the deep brain simulation right. We will we'll talk about that uh, in the neurophysiology uh, uh, you know topics right. What is Parkinson? What is epilepsy? How what kind of difficulty is there in the Parkinson? What are the gaps and for addressing those gaps what are the current techniques and what we are proposing right. So, all these are uh, uh, not only advanced research 
uh, but because the, the course that you have seen right is focused on advanced neural science. So, it should the all the research that I am showing it here all be teaching would be really of uh, cutting edge technologies that we are working on and will teach you how it can be used to address uh, gaps in the neural engineering neural science. So, the point is uh, this uh, devices are placed somewhere between motor area 1 and motor area 2, I will tell you what is motor area as well. Now, this is a micro needle right you can see this is a micro needle and each needle has several electrodes, electrode 1, electrode 2, 3 you can see the dots right. Uh, so, if you I assume that you can see this dots you see this dot 1 then many many dots are there. So, there are 13 uh, electrodes onto this single micro needle and this single micro needle is about 150 microns in width, this width is 150 microns ok and uh, this is an SEM image and let us acknowledge the center facility we call sense right at IISC uh, uh, which we have used to fabricate uh, this sophisticated device because we use something called deep reactive ion etching. We will go through all these uh, terms later DRIE deep reactive ion etching. So, uh, acknowledging the uh, center facility of our institute uh, this, this is an SEM image of the one single shank uh, with multiple electrodes not just multiple but many electrodes 13 electrodes and we use this thing to implant in the rat's brain this device will go in ok. Now, when it goes in it will record several signals from something called cortical column. So, there are arrays cortex right cortex and there are arrays which makes this cortical column. Each column is divided into 6 layers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 ok. So, when the needle goes in the so, what is the role of column? So, 4 layer 4 is an input layer 1, 2 and 3 is a processing layer processing layer and 5 and 6 is an output layer ok input processing and output. When you put the needle when you put this needle into this particular column which we call cortical column alright. We can record these signals coming from different layers right we can record the signals coming from different layers. So, <coughs> Uh, what what is the use of that? So, that we, we can study the uh, LFPs which is called local field potentials right and uh, study the effect of drugs or study the effect of electrical simulation on this particular uh, uh, signals right uh, uh, that is that it enters the column and that uh, processes within the column and what are the output through the single micro needle. The we have single micro needle we also have. So, this column somewhere is about 200 microns 200 to 250 microns ok. So, because it is 200 to 250 microns the this width is kept as 150 micron. So, that it will not puncture the column it will not puncture the column. Hmm. So, now this is about a single needle, but what we can see in the next in the uh, uh, this particular image in this image and in this image what we can see we can see that there are four shanks right instead of one single needle or single shank there are four shanks f o u r s h a n k s right four shanks. So, four shanks are there and each shank has multiple tetrodes two tetrodes tetrode is. So, if you see and understand the neuroscience right you have multiple wires fused together to form the tetrode. Right. So, you can say that not like this at the tip you will see 1, 2, 3 and 4 these are wires that are fused together to form tetrodes ok. These tetrodes are used to uh, uh, you know capture the signal from the brain from the surface of the brain, but can you have tetrodes on the needle itself. So, we, we fabricated multiple tetrode on one single shank that means you have 4 in 1 means 4 tetrode is 4 right. So, 2 tetrodes means 4 plus 4. So, 8 in 1 shank. So, we have how many shanks 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 8 into 4 is 32 right. So, 32 tetrodes 
right, that is two uh, uh, sorry electrodes on to four shanks, each shank has two tetrodes, all right. So, four shank will have eight tetrodes, each tetrode have four electrodes. So, eight would be 32, right, 32 electrodes into this four shank. Mm -hmm. So, that is what we can fabricate now uh, uh, indigenously, right, in the institute and of course, uh, here. So, <coughs> these are three shank needles, right, these are four shank needles. This I told you is are 10 electrodes, these are 32 electrodes, these are 5 electrodes, these are 13 electrodes, right, and these are all 4 shank needles, 4 shank S G N K S, right. So, this is where we are, this is where we are from the chip and sensors perspective. Now, I have not shown you many of the devices uh, in this particular slide, uh, but only sensors, if you have only sensors is not enough, only sensors will not solve the issue, all right. We should have sensors that are supported with electronic systems, electronic systems, right. Sensors when it is integrated within the electronic system, then you have a tool to work on, but the whole thing should be within a casing right, either it is 3D printing, I have you go for energy manufacturing, you go for subtractive manufacturing, finally, you have a complete tool that should be integrated with sensor and electronic. So, that is what we work on and that is why we will talk about the system that we have developed at B's lab and followed by the course that will start from silicon, how to fabricate device and so on and so forth. So, I will stop here, we will just uh, as a next lecture, right, we will be talking about the, the systems that we have developed in the laboratory, right, uh, and see how each system when integrated with a sensor, right, or uh, array of sensors can be used to solve an uh, important problem in uh, the clinical uh, research area. Then, <coughs> once we understand the systems, we will go from the first topic which is on the silicon, how silicon wafers should look like, uh, what you uh, what you can what you what kind of devices you can fabricate from silicon wafers, uh, what are the important problems that you can address using those sensors that we fabricate, some actuators that we fabricate. So, the fabrication technique requires you to understand the uh, different uh, equipment. So, we will learn about thermal operation, we will learn about EBME operation, we will learn about sputtering, we will learn about photolithography, wet etching, dry etching, micro machining, bulk and surface micro machining. Then once the device is ready, you have to characterize the device, once the de characterization is ready, you have to integrate the device with electronic system. When that is ready, you have to put within the casing, when that is ready, then you apply for uh, use the uh, tissues or, or use in, in vivo or use as a in vitro platforms, right. And then once that is done, then you can try to uh, get some data, move to next step and go to the uh, clinic. So, there is a huge step, but we will go step one by one right, to address the bigger problem uh, in the neural science uh, uh, area, right. Till then, I uh, will take your leave uh, and I will see you in the next class. Uh, cheers.